Hi, I'm Valley from Greenwood Solutions. Ground mount solar systems, DC cabling, questions always asked. This week we're looking at a 1.28 megawatt system and how much solar DC cable is required. After watching the presentation, you'll understand what are the processes involved, what cable can be used and what cable can't be used, and how much cable is used on a system this size and its dollar value. Now, if you like what you see, hit that subscription button. Let's get started. Ready, steady, go. A common question with larger roof and ground mount systems is how much cable is required. Calculations need to be made in order to cost the job correctly, obviously. And in this presentation, we are looking at DC cable, how much, what kind, etc. Per row, there's eight by strings of 20 by 400 watt panels. So row lengths are approximately 85 meters wide. There are 20 rows, and the total distance north-south with spacing is 142 meters, which includes the four meter north and four meter south perimeter roads, or access roads. The location for this array is in Laverton, Melbourne, Victoria. The spacing between the poles is nearly seven metres. Panels at a 30 degree pitch. And the total number of panels is 3,200. So it's a 1.28 megawatt system. So where do we start? What's the process? First, we determine the overall width of the row. In this case, it is approximately 85 metres. Made up of 80 panels per tier. And there's two tiers. Yeah, so we come to the board. So we have eight strings. So each of these is a string. And each string consists of 20 panels, 10 panels on top, 10 panels on, bo on the bottom uh, in a portrait configuration. The distance between here and here is approximately 85 metres. And what we are going to be doing is bringing all these strings to a central point and then coming down this final run, which is from here to here, 133 metres. So we know it's 85 metres across, so the central point is around about 42 and a half metres from here to here. Now, each string takes up approximately 10.85 metres, round about. So this run here, positive, negative, take into consideration um, no bends and curves when it gets to this central point, is 42 metres minus 10.85, so it's about 31 metres approximately. So we have two cables, 31 metres. And on the same side, we have here. Now obviously the next string, same consideration, that distance you remove another 10.85, or actually two times 10.85 to get to that point. So it's a fairly simple way of working out how much cable per row that you use. And in the case that we're presenting today, the total is 256 metres. So we've established that each row is using 256 metres of cable. And I'm not talking about the earth here, that's additional. We're talking about the pots and the neck. And obviously we multiply that by the 20 rows and we're using all up 5,120 metres of cable just within the rows. But now we are bringing all the cable to the centre of each row and there's a run down to the inverter station. Now the furthest run is 133 metres. So we have 133 metres times 16 cables, because there's eight strings, for row one. Now, what about row two? In this particular situation, because we're using panels that are quite squat, they're 1690 mil uh, long by 1046 mil wide in a two-tiered configuration with the 25 mil gap. So effectively, they're like that. 
bit of a gap. The, the pole spacing, the spacing between the poles, is only about seven meters. So for row number two, the calculation would be 133 minus seven times 16. And that would be the amount of cable. And you keep on going all the way down to the last row. Effectively, we subtract the distance between the panels using the pole positions for each row, then multiply this distance by the number of cables. As inverters are positioned on the back of the last row, this run is negligible. In this scenario, I have assumed one meter to inverters, so the last row run is 16 times one equals 16 meters. So how much cable do we use in total? We have a 1.28 megawatt solar system consisting of 3,200 times 400 watt panels. The total cable distance is approximately 27,500 metres. So there's quite a few questions you have to ask yourself. Should I parallel the strings? What about voltage drop calculations? What about allowing for all those bends? Should I allow another five to 10% to take into their count? And, and you know, what about mistakes as well? Calculate the length of all the rows, work out the string configurations and do all your calculations and then allow for additional cable. Thanks so much for watching part one of our presentation on DC cabling requirements for large ground mount solar systems. I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions and if you have any questions, any inquiries, indeed any answers, please feel free to drop us a line. And if you like what you see, hit that subscription button. Bye for now.